Okay, so hopefully a very quick video um, on a new product that I got for my car now. Haven't really shown this on the YouTube channel yet, but I ended up getting rid of the Dodge Charger, selling it for a good amount of money. In my opinion, I'm very happy with what I sold it for. Very disappointed that it's gone, but it went to somebody who will actually enjoy the car, so I'm happy with that. Um, anyway, so got a basically a brand new Toyota Mirai. It is a 2019 with, what are we at now kilometers wise? 4,000 kilometers on it, so practically a brand new car. I've had this thing for about two weeks now. I'm not going to say I love it, because I don't, but it was a relatively smart decision in order to get this car, build credit, and then get into a scat pack or something else in the future. Anyways, um, yeah, so for some reason, even though this is a 2019, it does not have Android Auto built in. Um... Also, there's not really anything I've done to this car yet. The only thing that I've done is add this ambient lighting. Um, same kind of thing I did in the Charger. It's actually on the seat back, rests back there too for some passenger stuff. Uh, but that's that's it. That was the first thing I've done. This is the second thing I've done. So essentially what I did is I was looking around on AliExpress because I wanted something Android Auto for the car. Um, I've seen the smaller stuff before turn on the ac because it's fucking hot in here um we're going through a heat wave here but so ended up finding this message the person was very very skeptical about this device for a few reasons um one of the main ones too is just generally in pictures when they say oh it's like a full screen display it covers the whole thing you get the device and it has massive bezels around it surprisingly this doesn't like i'll put it on brightness i know it's going to blow it out but you'll be able to see what the bezels actually are much better than i was expecting um i was expecting some like super super thick bezels some not very clear screen but this is pretty good um, for the price that I paid. So with shipping to Canada and import fees and everything, it came to about $220, which isn't horrible. Um, and it works very well. I have had a few issues with it, a few things that I'm pretty annoyed with, but nothing, nothing that ruins it for me. Um, I'll point those out first, though. So the two things that I'm pretty annoyed with, one is audio. So I messaged the person. I have a feeling that I'll be able to make it work without what they said. But what they told me is that the only way that this works sending audio to the car, unfortunately, is via FM radio. So you can see, like, I have it tuned to this FM radio, which is what this is set to so basically you set an fm channel on this and this like in car radio picks up what this is transmitting and that's how it does audio through the car um quality is not as good as it is stock so that that does suck um but spotify all the other you know apps that you have on your phone you can listen through this so it's better um, and if you ever wanted to, you could still connect to this, but also on most modern phones, you can connect to two different Bluetooth devices. So you could connect to this, have Android Auto going on this, but then you could also have just Bluetooth going to the, the car, or you could just not be playing music on this and use the cars like Sirius XM radio, which is something that I might do. You know, there's, there's options. It's not like you're just stuck with this once you install it. Main reason that I got it is for Google Maps. Toyota, for some reason, their in-car navigation, at least in this 2019 Mirai, is horrible. It constantly suggests the wrong and longer routes. There's a bunch of roads that I usually go on that just aren't mapped. Um, it could be something that I have to take it to, 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 to Toyota to get some stuff updated, but I mean, it's a 2019. Most of these roads have been around for 10 years, and for some reason, it's not on there. So I said, screw it, let's get something with Android Auto. And it works very well. Um, I'm currently recording, so I don't know what's going to happen here, but it does work. I just have it in a weird spot right now just to not completely give away my address. But honestly, I don't really care. Uh, you come here, I have a German Shepherd, and he will be happy to meet you. Um, so, yeah, uh, it works. Like I said, there are two reasons that I got this. One is for navigation. The other is for the cameras. Um, navigation works good. The very annoying thing is, I don't know if it's just my unit 
or what, but there's no like two finger touch. It's not a multi-touch display. So that means all you can do is you can move around here and it works pretty good, but if you wanna like pinch to zoom, it just it doesn't work with it. So you actually have to touch here and then use the sliders to zoom in and out. Not the end of the world, just something that I personally find kind of annoying. But yes, it is Android Auto. It is a relatively clear display. Everything does work. You can go through, you can, I'm sure there's ways to install other apps. I just, I haven't used Android Auto before, so I'm learning to. Um, but yeah, that works. Obviously music works. Not gonna play too much of that for copyright reasons, but like I said, quality is not as good. Um, so yeah, Android Auto works on it. The cameras on it are actually not bad. Um, there are two, there is a rear camera which I have mounted in my rear windshield. And then there is a front camera. The front camera is pretty clear, haven't really had any issues with it. Same thing with the rear camera. I went inside and just looked at the footage. You can read license plates, no issue there. Night driving is fine. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty good. One of the issues that I have, and this is just coming from a Toyota Mirai, is all of the gauges are like in the center back here. So there wasn't really a good spot to mount this. Like, unfortunately, I couldn't really put it up on the top of this dash because it's too high up and blocks a lot of visibility. I had it in front of me temporarily, but then the camera kept showing the dash and it just wasn't very good. So what I ended up doing is moving it to here, just on top of that display. My driving position's about here, so this is basically what I see, which is the speed, which is kind of all that matters. Everything else, like, I'll just show it here because it's easier, but um, everything else is warning lights and stuff like that, or radar information. And honestly, like, when I have it on Android Auto, I can glance down, I can see the radar, I can see the gear indicator, which whatever you should know what gear you're in when you're driving. Um, and it's fine. The other benefit to that is in the dash cam, it shows the speed, it shows everything. So that would be great if something ever were to happen. Um, not that anything ever will, but if it does. So yeah, uh, I'm surprised. You know, normally AliExpress, I haven't had great experiences with them all the time, um, but it works quite well. Uh, I'd recommend it. You know, for, for 200 bucks, if your car doesn't have Android Auto, as long as you can route the cables properly, like I need to figure out how to route mine a little bit better. Um, I haven't routed through like the headliner and everything perfectly fine, but like here, I don't know if I can maybe run it up and under this or something like that. Maybe with some 3M tape on the side. But yeah, routing the cables is a bit of a issue, but other than that, 